are you ready to clean up Blender's user interface and get rid of just a, a little bit of the clutter? Hey everybody, it's Joe, and this is a video in my continuing series on how to use Blender to make models for 3D printing. And this one isn't super important, but you know, it, it's something that I like to do on my setup, so I thought I'd share it with you. Now we've got a Chibimal cat here. This is Priscilla saying hi to everybody. Hey Priscilla, but this is not gonna be the focus of today's video. Today we're talking about these tabs across the top. Have you, have you noticed those? Have you wondered what they are? Well, good news is you can click them and they won't harm anything. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're currently on layout. If we click modeling, ooh, something's changed. I have to zoom out a little bit. Okay. Let's go to sculpting. Ooh, something's changed again, but really not a whole lot. If I go back to modeling and sculpting, they seem pretty similar, though something a little has changed, admittedly. If we go back to layout, almost the same as well. Let's see, UV editing. Oh, now that's a big change. Something is definitely different here. Texture painting. Actually, very similar to UV editing. Shading. Uh, well, shading's different for sure. Animation, okay, kind of similar to shading. Rendering, very different. Compositing, geometry nodes, scripting. What are all of these tabs for? Well, let's go back to layout. One thing that you, you might need to know about Blender is that it's super extendable. You can make it look and feel however you want. And here's the good news. You don't need the tabs to do it. I could take this tab right here. I could take this layout right here and make it look however I want. Now I'm not going to do it with this one. I like the layout the way that it is, but let's go over to the modeling tab. Notice that the modeling tab puts us in a, a different mode with the model and, and uh, it changes the view a little bit. We've lost our grid. That's actually because we've changed the scale and, and we would have to adjust the scale on this one just like we did before. But you know what? Here's the deal. If I want this to look exactly like the layout tab here, all I have to do is, well, first of all, I have to get out of edit mode. And there's a super easy way to do that. Just hit tab on your keyboard and we're out of edit mode. And then go up to the, the view here and change it to, I don't know, random colors, just like we did before. Oh, look, the shadows and everything is off. Oh boy. You know what else that we're missing a tab across the bottom. Go back to layout. See tab across the bottom is missing or not tab a window. But if we go to the lower left-hand corner or lower right-hand corner of this tab and drag it up, we can create a new tab down here. In fact, in blender, we can create new new windows anywhere we want and, and fill them with whatever information we want. But in this case, we can click the upper left hand button on that, change it to a timeline view. Mm, there we go. Took me three tries, but I got it. And now we can go back to layout view and look, it's practically the same. This, this particular view has a few things that are a little different here. Let me just close those off. But there we go. Now we've got the exact same animation tab down at the bottom. Now we don't actually use this animation tab very much for 3d printing, but I like having an extra window on the bottom. But if you don't, all you have to do, I'll go back to the modeling tab here in the corner of the 3d or of the main window here, you can click and drag and just cover up that other tab. And we could do that in the layout tab if that's what you want. But my point is, these two tabs aren't actually all that different and we can make the layout tab do exactly what we're doing in the modeling tab just by hitting the tab key or we can go up to the menu in the upper left hand view of the 3d view where it says edit mode and go to object mode and we can swap between them just like that what i'm saying is this modeling tab not really all that useful considering that we can get there with the press of a button on the layout tab. So right mouse click on the modeling tab and let's just delete it. Go ahead, delete it. Don't be afraid to do that. Now, if you're worried and you're like, wait, what if I want that later? Well, if you go to the right hand side of the tabs, you'll see there's a plus sign. You can click that, go to general, 
and there's our modeling tab again. We can click it and bring it back in. The only problem is now it's at the end and not at the beginning, but we could reorder that. So it's not gone forever. So just delete it, get rid of it. Don't worry about it. The sculpting tab. Yeah, similarly, it's, it's very similar to the layout tab, but now we're in a different mode. Well, you know what? In layout, we can use that object mode menu and go to sculpt mode, or we can hit, let's go back to object mode, control tab and now we get this cool little menu that pops up and we can go to sculpt mode just like that so we've got the sculpt tab now the sculpt tab does set up the view a little bit different okay we've also got the tool over here so boom oh sculpt mode now we got the tool and if you want your look to look like i don't know something else for sculpting well, we can do that. That's a matte cap lighting, matte cap lighting, and we can choose our matte cap lighting. I like the red one that just kind of looks like red clay, but you can choose whichever one you want. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. And I think the one that they've chosen is the first one here. Oh, our matte cap wants to do that one in, in random colors there. Second one or that one. It doesn't matter. We have control over it. We can do that anytime that we want. I'm going to go back to studio lighting on this one because it's good. But again, my point is sculpting tab, not really that useful. Delete it. Now our layout tab is actually kind of pulling triple duty now as far as the tabs are concerned. So maybe layout isn't the right word for it. Maybe we should call it one window which isn't quite accurate. We've got the one window and then we've got the outliner and the properties, but that's, you know, it's one big window. And the reason why I'm calling it that, so all you have to do is just double click on the tab and you could rename it. Because when we get to UV editing, notice how now we have a side by side view. And if you go to texture paint, we've got another side by side view. Now, once again, we've changed modes. So if I go back to the layout tab, a control tab we can go to texture paint mode and actually if we go to the uv editing oh, there's texture paint mode and i'm going to go back to object mode but if we go to the uv editing notice we're just in edit mode and in texture paint mode we're in texture paint mode and on the left here we have well in the texture paint we have a window for let's see what is this and and for 3D modeling, we don't actually use this much, but yeah, this is an image editor and go to UV editing and this is a texture node editor. Now we don't actually use, well, we might use UV editing a little bit depending on what we're doing, but we don't actually use texture paint. But the point is this side by side view, we can recreate this anytime we want, just like we did before. I can add a second 3D view in my one window and now it's a two window mode. So let's go ahead and just get rid of the texture paint tab. We don't need that right now, not for 3D printing. Now we've got a two view mode. You know what? I kind of like the UV editing, but we're, we'll make this tab. We'll just call it side by side. And if we need to change this to another 3D viewport, we can do that. Or if we want to change it to anything else, we can do that. I believe it was a texture node editor before. Nope, it wasn't that. It was, what was it before? Well, I'm going to feel awful silly if I can't get it back to the way it was. Oh, it was UV editor. Well, of course it was UV editor. And I actually find UV useful for, for certain applications. We'll talk about that in the future, but there we go. Shading. Shading is not real useful for 3D printing. Shading is how you change the way light reflects off of things when you render it. So we actually don't need shading at all. But again, if you're worried about bringing it back, you can come here and look, there's our shading tab. Okay. It's not going to be gone forever, but let's right mouse click and delete it. Animation. This is useful if we're going to be moving stuff around or doing simulations and stuff like that. I kind of like the layout of this one. It's got some useful information, but we don't really need it. However, I'm going to keep it. You don't have to keep it. And in fact, we can bring it back at any time. So feel free to delete that rendering. Well, we definitely don't need this tab at 
all. In fact, there's lots of reasons why we don't need it. So get rid of that one. Compositing. Okay, compositing is after you render to add effects to your, we don't need that. If I say render, you should immediately go, oh yeah, we, we don't need a whole lot of that. Geometry nodes. Okay, geometry nodes are, are a super powerful and useful way. And we are actually going to be doing some geometry nodes in this series. But um, are we going to be doing it in this you know, menu, in this window? I don't know. You know, I'm going to leave it for now, but um, you could just as easily get rid of it because oftentimes whenever I do geometry nodes, I use that animation tab in my one window view and I change this one to my geometry nodes editor and it's all good to go. But so geometry nodes, I'm going to leave it here because I want to play with this one, but you don't have to, you can get rid of it and scripting. All right, Blender allows you to write code in Blender to do amazing things. And if that excites you, if you think, oh my goodness, I can't wait to write code in Blender, then keep this tab. Otherwise, get rid of it. And now going back to our one window view, look at how much cleaner this is. You don't need all those tabs. In fact, really, you just need the one big window and maybe the side by side. However, here's the good news. You can add a new tab anytime you want, set it up to be any one of these and rearrange it to be anything that you want. So if you find that there's a workflow that works better for you, you can create a tab laser focused to doing that. In fact, we could take the one window tab, right mouse click on it and duplicate it. And now we have a new one window tab that we could start rearranging and doing whatever we want with and making it set up however we want. And we can, in fact, we can go the other direction. We can get rid of stuff and, and make it so that we don't have anything on here, but the one big window that we want or whatever you want to do, there's, there's nothing stopping you from just taking over the world with this one big window. Here we go. There's a true one window view. <laughs> so I hope that this has helped people and maybe helped you clean up and, and make Blender your own and make Blender useful for you. Now to make these changes permanent, all we have to do is, well, I got to clear out Priscilla and file default save startup file. Now your startup file only has these basic tabs. Remember to click that twice. There we go. We've got our scene all set up and clean and ready to go so that we can make cool things in Blender. So let's go make something awesome. I want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You are the wind beneath my wings and you make these videos possible. Thank you guys very much. And until I see you next time, remember, you are a child of God and you're special. So take care of yourself. And if you can take care of somebody else too, thank you very much for watching.